Welcome to the Zacherlich Cast podcast YouTube video interview program that features me talking to some of the best and brightest in the atheist slash secular slash awesome community. That's right, the gong sound means cold open part two. This is episode number 229. I recorded this interview on July 9th, 2020. Thank you to Steve Shives for coming back on and basically letting me fanboy about Hamilton for most of our time together. We also got to talk about bad movies and quality hair pieces, and he's cranking out content like it's on an assembly line. But it's quite a well-lit assembly line, and I'm tired even thinking about it. This week I had the privilege to have on two very popular YouTubers. So for anyone on the atheist or left-wing politics side, if you get 100,000 subscribers, you are doing well. If you want to crap on feminism or say that Black Lives Matter is a criminal organization, well, just add another zero, minimum. That makes the people not on that side even more admirable. For content creators, you get the tough job in that you get in that finding an audience at first is difficult. To keep one, especially now that extra money is disappearing for people, is almost impossible. So for Vadim Nyquist to come out of the shadows of Creationist Cat and make himself into a spin-off character is a gutsy move. I admire video editors because it's tough enough just to deal with the audio side of things. He's really the kind of YouTuber that deserves your full attention. These are well-researched videos that are funny as hell. I also apologize because for some of my listeners, the names you're going to hear are people that if you look into them, there are things you cannot see and things you cannot unhear. But... Welcome to 2020. We talked about Creationist Cat's creation myth, and yes, I sing again. We talk about Van Deem's comedy background, his appearance at the 2018 Mythicist Milwaukee Conference, and the upcoming series finale of Creationist Cat. No spoilers. Let's start the conversation. Oh, please come in. Maggie smells bad, and the cat wants something, but I don't know what. He once was an ordinary house cat until he was zapped by God through the internet. All this knowledge, all this power. Guess he'll just debate some atheists on the internet. Woo! Now we have the useless human slave, but... You know, I feel like we're going to find some use for you in the next 45 minutes. For Creationist Cat, Vadim, welcome to the show. I, I think CC prefers shit for brains, human slave. Thank you for having me on, Zach Relige. Uh I've never been serenaded before with the Creationist Cat theme. You have the voice of an angel. So I just want to say thank you, and thanks to anybody who's watching. And just in case, um, you know, you get a little bit of a feel for what Creationist Cat is all about. Then you'll get a feel for what Vadim's all about. But I thought I'd throw in some out of context quotes before we get started. Oh yeah, sure, go for it. This Milo fella sounds like he has the journalistic integrity of a bucket of donkey shit. Mm, yes, very true. <laughs> Vadim is sucking major butt there. Not, not, not sure which video that is, but um, it's, I probably was at the time. And the last one, it, it is impossible to get pregnant by banging a cat. Yeah, yeah. I um, if, if you're a human being. So that's the advantages of um, cat on human. Uh, oh, my God. I don't want to say that. That cat fucker. At least, you know, the people who hate hate my guts. So, um, yeah, don't want to throw out anything there. That, that I think I are, already probably have thrown something out that somebody can, can take out of context and blackmail me with. It's fine, though. You can, we, we can keep going. No need to restart the stream. It's weird. You're, you're, you're like a YouTube you know, personality, yet mm -hmm. you say people hate your guts. It seems that's not very much like YouTube that I know, but, you know, I make exceptions, right? Oh, well, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, evidently you don't, you don't know much about YouTube. It's, it's, it's uh, a hellscape and a half. Um, there definitely are a lot of wonderful people that I have come to be friends with through uh, being on YouTube and whatnot, but 
yeah, kind of just developing these acrimonious relationships with, with people with whom you have diametric opposed beliefs it's just it just comes with the territory you could be the nicest youtuber on earth um i'm the second nicest and people uh you know i i have a few i have a few enemies out there <laughs> maybe, maybe not the second nicest maybe uh maybe fifth, fourth or fifth somewhere somewhere in the top 10. So according to the, the bio, uh, CC is a born-again Seventh-day Evangelical Anglo-Saxon Greco-Roman Presbyterian Orthodox Shadamite. Mm, yeah, I'm but very impressed. Yet pick the, pick the, a denomination since, you know, if you're in the South, there's probably like 20 of those churches within a 10-mile radius if you really tried. Yeah, it's 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 just you know it's like a salad bar. He he wants a little bit of everything, and uh, he just um, you know kind of likes to dip it a little bit into the Presbyterianism, a little bit into uh, Catholicism, and, and 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 all that stuff. So um, you know he's not big on Judaism or or uh, Islam, but um, when it comes to any of the like the you know the the wide swath of Christian religions, he's he's a fan. So other than the lovely origin story song, how did the Creationist Cat channel get started? Like what's the hero, superhero origin story that well, you're to tell? Well, I mean, if we're going to be honest, uh, I guess it was somewhere around 2012, uh, I decided that I both wanted to start a YouTube channel. I have a background in comedy, um, done a lot of comedy performance, and and I uh, used to do stand up and and a lot of improv and sketch comedy at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. And I was sort of away from that whole scene because I was no longer in New York. And I had gotten turned on to the atheist scene. And then at that point, I, I want to stress that the, well, at least in my eyes, the, the atheist community was a, a far different animal. And I, I really, um, I mean, it wasn't just the atheist scene. I mean, to tell you the truth, I've, I've always kind of seen, and, and this isn't always the case, but uh, I sort of saw at the time and still do to a certain extent skepticism and and atheism as kind of going hand in hand skepticism it's it's hard to say that word out loud these days because because like there's so many youtubers who i feel sort of flushed that term down the toilet so many people who just tacked on the word skeptic skeptic to mm -hmm. their 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 name or you know they're just just Call themselves a skeptic. It, it's it's sort of like the way that uh, on like in, in like peanuts. Is it Lucy? No, it's it's yeah yeah it's Lucy. I believe uh, just, the football just, back. Hangs, hangs the sign that says the doctor is in. Oh yeah, and uh, maybe, maybe that's peppermint patty. I forget, but yeah, it's 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 um at one time you know I I the, the atheist community was far different the it, it it did have in my opinion it was in touch with skeptic roots and you had a lot of youtubers who were just doing it for the fun of it and and were also making really educational videos making and i'm not saying that those are that the, the there aren't people out there who are doing that these days there are uh sort of like a handful of people that i suppose are still um pretty good but i don't know uh we were talking earlier before this started like really somewhere around 2015 maybe 2014 when like the, all the anti-sjw stuff kicked in and just uh shitting on feminism became sort of like the thing to do i, I don't know i i slowly started tuning out <laughs> Um, actually it was, it was horrifying to kind of see like, like it, it just kept on getting more and more right wing. And I was like, no, it can't get any worse than this than it did. And so anyhow, I don't know. I don't know if I want to 
uh, bore you much by way really into that, but um, Me 2020, you know, yeah, so the ultimate and all that. I mean, I started this channel in 2015, and it did mm -hmm. seem like you know we were kind of skipping along in a field, holding hands, and then you know it all turned into a YouTube comment section, mm -hmm. and it seemed like it happened overnight. You're like, wait a second, what? <laughs> Yeah, um, it, 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 YouTube was different back then. I mean, I guess the internet in general sort of, I, I remember a time when, um, I mean, I'm not saying like it was all peace and love, but, it, you know, there were occasional assholes. But I, I think, you know, two things happened. One is there were people who, I mean, there's probably a lot of other reasons besides this, but I think that at first people were really just like, wow, this YouTube thing is just like free entertainment. Like they, it, it, people now take it for granted. And you just used to get so many people saying, oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah you still get a little bit of this, but uh, just people by and large just be like, oh, thanks so much for making this, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, uh, you're, you know, you're fat and like you're, you're, uh, like your, your walls are ugly or, you know, just, just bitching about, uh, inane things. Um, and, uh, but, but, but you know what? I'm sorry. I'm trailing off. I just, Hey, anyone who's watching, just so you know, I'm extremely tired right now. I'm a little mellow. So if I'm a little all over the place, that's why I'm not on drugs right now. Um, at least nothing um, illegal. And anyhow, uh, I wanted to finish your your question, where you, you know, which uh, you asked a while ago. Um, when I started the channel, the kind of um, you know, I thought, hey, everybody loves cats, and CC is uh, really. Um, the, the the cat who plays CC is just uh, an amazing cat to photograph and and uh, they they are really like like you, you it's very rare that you can find a cat that can do that you know that that is just so mellow that it'll just let you shoot it and um and then I was also attracted to doing atheist content because at the time. I thought, you know, I'm, I have pretty left-wing politics, and I did think that it was a a way in which to, because because the right, in my opinion, has a stranglehold on Christianity in general, and if you can get people to kind of question their beliefs, sometimes when they become atheists, uh, not always, <laughs> and and YouTube has definitely proved this. But uh, a lot of times kind of moving to the left goes along with that. And uh, I no longer think, at least for the time being, it's probably going to be at least several years. Like there's going to have to be some sort of sea change with atheism in general, because I really do feel that it's at best, like, I guess what you'd call radical centrist. But I really think it's more right wing these days the the whole scene which is which is crazy to me because it just back in the early days the majority of people who were kind of talking on its behalf in my opinion i mean they weren't super le super super left wing but still like pretty progressive in at least uh when it came to social policies and things like that so anyway I don't want to ramble on too much about that. I hope that answers your question. No, I like rambling. Rambling is good. That means, you know, okay. you talk I'm more. Kidding. I have beverages. I think it all works <laughs> out. We're all good. Sweet, sweet. But initially the channel was kind of CC mm -hmm. arguing with atheists. Yes. How um, are you able to kind of transition over time to make it more about politics and uh, just kind of that's a good question is it do you I, go I, with like what you think oh this is what my audience would want or it's like yeah. here's what i want to talk about and well, i'm well, you guys are gonna like it i i always 
really from the beginning, although, I mean, definitely uh, in the beginning, the uh, for, for a few years, the general thrust was atheist uh, related topics. And usually I'd, I'd throw in, e even in um, certain videos that didn't have to do with it, I'd throw in kind of uh, some like jokes here and there, or or just like moments where I quoted Bible verses, and and there were kind of jokes that critiqued w uh, the message behind those. But um, from the beginning, I I was doing like like I think the second video that I made was about pareidolia, which I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but it's the human tendency to like let like. For instance, you know, people who see J Jesus in in grilled cheese, or or like the Pope in dog shit, um, like or, 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 or literally Jesus in in a dog's ass. I don't know if you've ever seen that famous picture. Uh, so like I I did videos sort of uh, about um, skeptical concepts because you know I mean pareidolia it's it's sort of like uh, educating people on the ways that we trick ourselves, the ways that our mind kind of, um, I don't know, kind of, uh, has a tendency to, to trick us. Um, and, uh, and here and there, I mean, so some of the issues that I talk about that were atheist related, um, were also political, like abortion. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, at the time, uh, there was kind of a, uh, and, and I s suppose this is still going on, but I don't think it's, no, I was about to say, I don't think it's as much of a threat, but it, it, it is, it actually is, uh, you know, the, the whole cr creationist thing, just kind of people with really bizarre religious beliefs, um, or, or, or fundamentalist religious beliefs who, want to um, change policy and, and kind of erode the division between church and state. And I I don't know, I, I, I always had kind of like a one-off one video here and there that was just com completely just comedic and didn't really have anything to do with, with uh, religion or politics. And, and then, um, let me think, you know, I mean, I, I started doing videos on like 9-11 conspiracies, on Holocaust denialism. I did a few of those. I, I, I'm trying to remember some of like the, it's, it's all a, a, a blank because I did so much acid in high school. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I just, you, you know what it was? It was actually this. Um, you know, as, as I said, uh, the YouTube landscape was changing between, I mean, I, I guess it was as early as 2014, but I think it was around 2015 or 2016 that things just got so bad that, because I did not want to be the kind of YouTuber who, and it's funny because this is just so much of what I do now, but I didn't want to be the kind of guy who like called people out and made enemies and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, the, the, there, there was probably maybe one or two other people that I, you know, who, who weren't within sort of like the loose circle that I, you know, you know, there were creationist YouTubers that I would mock and whatnot, but there was this guy, atheism is unstoppable, who, in my opinion, that is was the uh, kangaroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just think he's a yeah. Fun. I yeah, I think of all your back and forth. I think that was the one that was, I don't know, went on for the longest or was the, I don't know. It it went on. I mean, he, he still makes videos uh, about <laughs> me. Um, I, I, I never watched them. Uh, we, the, we, we made a series of videos, I think in 2016 or 2017 called Atheism is Unstoppable, uh, Pwned to Oblivion. And it was a three-part video, and we just wrecked him. I mean, he never really responded to any of the things that I I 
to, I mean, because this this is someone who is not just, in my opinion, kind of racist. He's also been incredibly abusive and uh, used his his um, viewership to uh, like harass people, target people, dox people, and uh, yeah, you know, um, I made a video in response to him because at the time I had like never really encountered someone who was espousing these, these, um, in my opinion, like pretty racist views. Uh, at the time, I think I was a little naive and I mean, he still swears up and down that he's not racist, but most racists do. And I sort of took this this opinion like, well, maybe he's not racist. Maybe just he just believes all these stupid racist things. And you know, uh, it it doesn't really matter because if you're if you're uh, basically you you're still functionally um, if if you're spreading horrible shit. Um, you, like for instance, if if I this is something that would never in a million years happen. But let's say that I or another YouTuber was convinced that race realism, you, you, you've you heard this term, right? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really know. Um, like, you were doing a video about, I think it was called No Bullshit. Is that the? the oh, yeah, yeah. The well, he's definitely he just brought up the term, so it actually came up. You know, when I, yeah, yeah, he's he, he, the, the the I think the video that you're talking about, maybe you're talking about a different one because he, he's we feature him in a couple, but we made a video called the uh, No Bullshit I Swear I'm Not a Nazi Stream. Yeah, and that's actually that's the that's that's a fun one, but um, <laughs> I, I actually think AIU is way worse, way more toxic than No Bullshit. No Bullshit, bullshit is fucking horrible, but um, like AIU just. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about him because he's just, just kind of, I don't know. These days, he's kind of boring to me. Um, he recently lost his channel, and uh, he's lost it like twenty times. So I'm expecting mm. him to come back. So is that in the same wave that got rid of Gavin McInnes and uh, was it Stephen Molyneux and a bunch of other kind of alt right types recently? I believe so. I believe so. And um, yeah, uh, I it was it was around that time, and I don't really know. I don't really know or care what he's. Where where he's going to go, right? I mean, I mean, fortunately, the uh, you know, it just it just sucked because again, the like like when he came on the scene, what I was about to say is that I I just I'd never seen somebody. Well, I maybe yeah, I did say it again. Tired. I apologize, but I had never seen someone. I like basically he made this video that, um more or less said like hey black people you should be you should understand that you're going to be subject to police brutality because you guys commit all these crimes and, and it is true the statistics are but, but, but there's you know there, there are logical reasons for behind that which he dismisses and uh he, he was basically like uh, apologetics for police brutality against black people and um, and that really ushered in a that 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 kind of really did when when YouTube started embracing people like that. That's when the landscape changed very dramatically. I'm not saying that he's responsible for it. If he was never around, I'm sure that other you know pieces of shit <laughs> would have um, come in. But anyway. Why don't we move on to more jovial topics? <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. So you've been doing the show. Is it just eight years or has it been longer It's been than about eight years. Uh, I mean, I, honestly, it wasn't until about 2015 that I started uploading nearly every month. You know, I, I would go long periods without uploading every now and then. People would think that I was gone, and it was around 2015 that it became more of uh, a career thing, and um, you know I was able to kind of make a living off of it. 
some sometimes while doing other things on the side. But I've always, you know, there are a lot of things that I could probably do differently. Uh, I mean, certainly if I, uh, if, if I wanted to sell out and be a uh, just, uh, I don't know, right wing doofus, um, I, I think I could find because I know I, I, they're a very easy crowd to please. Um, I, I, I could do that. And then, and then also I could probably pump out other types of videos that are decent, but I, I, I like to have, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, you know, going to sound pretentious, a, a visual artist. So I, uh, the editing style of my videos is very labored and it takes, there, it just, I like throwing all of these visuals at the, the viewer. I want to kind of entertain people in, in every single way with as many jokes, as much eye candy and interesting ideas as I can. So it takes time to do that, you know, and it's not necessarily conducive to the YouTube algorithms, but it's just, you know, I, I have to kind of make the stuff that is in my heart and that I, that I want to, that I want to do that. I want to, present to people i i just um you know there's a lot of great youtubers who will put out seven eight video i mean maybe that's a lot but we'll we'll put out several videos a day uh and i just don't think i'll ever be one of those youtubers i don't think i'll ever even be one of those youtubers who is able to make uh videos reliably at least once a week just because it's very rare that I come up with an idea that I'm very uh, excited about that does not take a lot of both editing time and research time and all of that. Well, your videos are very dense and they're not, mm. I mean, there's something like 25 minutes or something like 50. So they do kind of spread out in terms of, of space. But you've been doing, you know, you and CC have been collaborating for years. So mm -hmm. what made to you decide that this is like the final season? And how has well, that I just, planning been since here we are in the middle? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I, again, um, well, one, first of all, I have to kind of wait and see how the audience that I, I pot, you know, I, I possibly will start cultivating a wider audience. And so there's, it's going to be a little touch and go and kind of see how the new people react. I would assume that they'll uh, enjoy CC if they enjoy it, because it's not like there's going to be a major difference in terms of the irreverent tone and the editing style and whatnot. I would like to have him be a semi-frequent guest. Uh, but what made me do it? Um, I won just, uh, I, as, as much as I love doing CC and it's been like just a real, um, I don't know, overall, even though that there are elements of, of being on YouTube that, that you can bitch about, it's been fantastic. You know, when I started the channel, I never had the, the, the inkling or the the desire or the belief that I was going to become like a career YouTuber. Not that I'm like, I don't know, fucking PewDiePie or anything like that. Uh, and so that in itself, like the, the, the ways that I've kind of been able to get to know certain followers. Sometimes I don't like the word fans because I don't, <laughs> I, I don't like to make like make it sound like I feel like my um, so it's a word that makes it sound like they're underlings, you know. And uh, I'm just like a guy on YouTube, you know. So I I don't I, I think that e fame is is pretty meager, it you know as as far as uh, fame goes. So so anyway, but, um, I'm gonna get back on course to the question that you asked again the the fatigue it 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 makes me a little spacey so um yeah uh the years of doing it 
I, I, I want to challenge myself. I want to, you know, I, I've, I've kind of more and more over the course of the past several years, I've worked my, myself into the videos and a lot of my most successful videos are videos that I either host, um, cause there's, there's a, there's a few, not many, but there's a few that I host exclusively and there's no CC. And all those videos have done comparatively well on my channel. And then the videos where I am, um, you know, kind of featured, they tend to do better than uh, the ones where, I'm talking about ones with CC and myself, uh, like the last video that I did. And, um, you know, uh, the, there was a video that we did a few months back called The God Pill that I mm. like people I, I get good feedback and so the combination of wanting to do something new and then also to tell you the truth again I I'm not crazy about the atheist scene and uh there's there's something even though that I I'll never you know I, I don't think you can stop being an atheist or it's very rare um I just, uh, I find a lot of aspects of the scene, even though that there's some good people out there, I, I don't want to make it sound like I think everybody sucks, but it's a little cringy and and I want to distance myself from it. Um, there's just, uh, and also I, I think in, in like the left you YouTube, political sphere, you know, kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't really consider myself a bread tuber, but I'm bread tube friendly. I've got a lot of friends who are bread tubers and whatnot, damn good uh, YouTubers and, and, and very cool people. But uh, yeah, like, like I can't tell you how often people will leave messages on my channel saying things to the effect of, Hey, I haven't checked on this channel in years because uh, everyone in the atheist skeptic community became an asshole. But for some reason, you you magically didn't. Th thanks for not being an asshole. So I know that there are a lot of people who just I <laughs> might be the best like thing you can have said to you. <laughs> yeah, I I always appreciate it, but at the same time, I'm like fuck. You know, like I know that there the, are a lot the of assumption. Yeah, is that yeah yeah. There's, there's a lot of people who um. I mean, first of all, I also still to this day get people who are just like, I've seen this recommended to me a million times and I had no idea what the fuck this was. I thought you were an actual creationist. Um, so I, I get those oh. too. So so hmm. it, it's sort of like, you know, um, I, I feel that rebranding might uh, reinvigorate the channel in terms of uh, just getting more subs in and, and, but really more than anything, I mean, I wouldn't do it for that reason alone. Uh, I just, I, I've, I'm not the kind of person like, like I'm more motivated by what I want to do artistically. I hope that doesn't sound too pretentious, but, uh, yeah. So I just want to start making, I have a long list of videos that I want to make as myself and just really give my point of view when you have other characters involved sometimes it's it's harder to streamline videos there's certain videos that i just um you know that 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 cc as much as i love cc that he do, he doesn't complement the ideas that i'm discussing or it's or it's very difficult to find a way to make that work and I just, yeah, I guess those are the reasons. Um, the the main one being that I just I I, I just want to move on. It's it's a little bittersweet because it's it's like moving from a really nice house to another really nice house. Like you're you're looking forward to get to this new neighborhood, this new place, and but yet at the same time you have all these old memories at that house and. It's it's a uh, a little kind of melancholy when you're packing things up, if that makes sense. Well, there are a lot. I mean, if you listen to podcasts or YouTube videos for a period of years, there does seem like there are two ways to go. One, it's like 
it's a very, you know what you're getting and it's kind of the same stuff and the same jokes every time. Mm-hmm. Or somebody decides to go out of left field or right field, you know, and you have to decide to either go with them or not. Is it just for you? Is it strange to think I've made myself into like the spinoff of the original creation and then deciding whether it's, you know, it's going to to work in terms of keeping an audience, you know, keeping yourself satisfied as a creator, all that stuff. I mean, you know, with any change comes a bit of risk, but uh, again, I, you know, I, 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 I think that, I mean, I'm optimistic and uh, I, I think that it's, it's possible that there might be a little bit of a drop off at first, I, I doubt people are going like like view wise are going to dip, but maybe my Patreon will go down a little bit. Maybe some people just really love cats and 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 uh, you know won't want to support it for for that reason, you know. Um, but uh, I I I I think that um, you know most of my patrons who I've spoken to really just enjoy me and 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 i i mean essentially like you know i i don't want to shatter your illusions here but um i i write gracious cat and i i i think that mind blown i i can um i can funnel that same creativity into something different and there are also you know, it's it's it's. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. Like I, again, it's going to be still very irreverent, and the editing style is going to be very similar. Yet at the same time, uh, it might have moments that are more serious than traditional creationist cat videos. However, we've had moments like that. Like uh, I don't know if you saw the the video that I mentioned earlier the God pill. Um, but there yeah. was mm-hmm. some intense moments in that. And so I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I consider myself a kind of a, a filmmaker when it, when, when it comes to making these videos, even though that they're not full length films, but uh, I, I'm, I'm so, sort of like a cinephile and just a movie geek. And I just want to kind of, aside from making politically oriented comedy and it might not just be purely politics. I mean, it, it, there will probably be a little bit of pop culture um, discussions, but I guess I'll find a way to funnel that through a sort of left wing lens. Like for instance, I don't know if you're familiar with Jack Saint, but he's, yeah, a really excellent YouTuber. We actually mm-hmm. did a collaboration um, on a video that that uh, we called Tim Palooza, where we talked about Tim Pool and uh, oh, an episode of of um, Twitter Blitz. And oh, that's you know that that's one thing. Like like I really like I really like the Twitter. But I don't know if you're familiar with it. You probably are since since it sounds like you've watched a lot. Ballroom of- Blitz, Twitter Blitz. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That okay, kind of thing. Um, I really like that format. So, uh, you know, Mm. that's, that's one way that I'd like to bring back CC here and there every now and then do an episode of that. Um, I also really like creationist cat chat. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if, if we do that, that, that might be a hard one to, to pull off because that's, that's so CC oriented and I don't know how to, how to incorporate myself. So, but yeah, I, I believe you can make it work. Now this is, this is not have to do with your channel directly, although you didn't, you know, mention on your trailer video, mm-hmm. what was it like for you to use the skills you've learned over the years doing your show, doing special effects on an independent film, you know, actually working on an independent film and you know, that's, it's coming out. Um, well, I'm sorry. What? How? How so? What? Uh, I, I I I've worked a bit in film, um, but usually in like either in front of the camera. I mean, not <laughs> nothing that 
people or not that much that people would be familiar with. Um, well, you mentioned it on your, your trailer that there was a, a friend of yours had an independent oh, film coming right, out and you, right, you did some right, special right, effects work right, on that? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, right. Um, that's uh, one of my old college friends, Noah Warner, and he's a really creative guy. And he made, I actually titled the film. Um, it's it's called Trapdoor at the Edge of the Universe. And it's a quirky little comedic film that was made on a shoestring budget, but he really, um, he, he does a lot with a, a small budget. And I, I'm, I didn't, he, he did the majority of the effects within the film, but there are certain sequences that I, I, there's one sequence. It's a pretty psychedelic sequence that takes place in like this space, like alternate dimension, uh, and I, I did lots of kind of just uh, weird effects th uh, on that. Um, and, and I, I've also done, you know, every now and then I, I get work as an editor and I've, I've, I've edited some shorts, I've edited, uh, like music videos and I've also directed and, and, and shot music videos as well. Um, but all, yeah, all those things are really, you know, I funnel it into CC as much as I can, because again, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just a big fan of both, um, psychedelic visuals, visuals that are sort of, uh, I don't know, adult swimish, if you will, if you, are you familiar mm -hmm. with adult swim? It's, yeah. uh, yeah, most people are. And um, and and then I'm also just like it, 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 a lot of people don't realize it, but there's there's lots of like little shout outs here and there, or kind of allusions to. I mean, sometimes popular films, but but often very obscure, like foreign films or like. Uh, you know, classics, um, film noirs. I mean, just just you name it. Because uh, I I have such a wide variety of tastes. Actually, I'm uh, one thing that that you'll often see. And again, you have to look you have to look closely for it, and you also have to kind of be like a genuine film dork to to, to see it. But I, there's a lot of both imagery. And allusions to certain horror films here and there. It's sort of like you know, it, I don't want to make it sound like I, I think that I'm on par with this gentleman, but it's a, it, it's sort of like uh, things like Quentin Tarantino tends to do, just kind of throwing in small details that are, are homages to uh, things that his general audience probably has no idea exists. But anyway. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I, I just, I'm just a movie dork at, at heart. It's probably like, I mean, maybe there's one or two other topics that I have hmm. more useless tr uh, trivia like stored in my brain about, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of, one of the few things in this world that I, I would say I'm somewhat knowledgeable about. <laughs> well, I think your influences can't help but come out in your final product, right? I mean, that's just yeah, yeah, going to happen. Yeah. Now, do you feel personally responsible? Do you think that based on your channel, people just assume that all cats are alt right? Um, <laughs> uh, that's a hard question to answer. I mean, Cortez. Uh, whew, anyway. Um. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe it's just a uh, just a fad in in the cat world right now. But um, I, I I don't know of many other talking cats other than Cortez and and and, Wiz and uh, Christian's cats. Uh, so I, I I don't have much to to kind of co contrast it with. Now I might be catching a bad time because you you are tired. You've been doing video work, and of course, video work and the uh, you know drug binge that you said you were doing on your last uh, yeah. trailer yes, might yes. be the same thing. 
Um, is it possible? Can yeah. he, I don't know. It's like I want to figure out how to distill this because seeing you at Mythicist Milwaukee in 2018. Oh, you were there? Like, like I saw the videos. I okay, right. wasn't there, but I think 2017 was when people were like, oh, shit, these people have turned, the alt-right thing. But in 2018, you were on the stage. I think there were five people on the stage. Yeah. And it was like four-on-one, including the moderator. Yes, yes, it was. No, no. It you, was, did you know that going in that this is what it was going to be? It wasn't just four on one. Like, like I mean, well, the audience. Was like, yeah, well, you can at times you can hear the audience being rowdy, but when you watch the video, you really because the microphone doesn't pick up everything. It really doesn't give you the 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 feel of that that actually being there had. I it, it it that whole thing has has swung so far to the right, and as I was telling you before we we started this, we talked about this very briefly. But by the way, I, I went into that knowing it was heavily slanted to the right. Mm-hmm. I was under no illusion that it was going to be uh, any different, and um, you know, I still felt like uh, I'm, I'm glad I did it and I'll exp- I can explain why in a second. However, um, yeah, uh, the, the uh, fucking audience was like, it was like, I was the, he- do, do you know what the term a heel is in it's wrestling? It's like a wrestling. Yeah. It, it, it's like the guy. You're who, the person they brought on for people to boot. Everybody hates. And <laughs> he's the guy who gets like body slammed by, uh, I don't know, the junkyard dog, or or I, I only know like '80s wrestlers because I'm a boomer. But um, was it the or, was it you on stage that led to the like you becoming like memed for the kind of uh, you had yeah, this it, kind of stage? It was a picture of me in the like green room, and okay. I just look like I'm <laughs> pissed. I just uh, I'm actually wearing the same shirt in the picture. And uh, and I'm just like kind of like I have a beer in one hand, Turned your head down and, a little bit, like, uh, and um, and I wasn't even in a bad mood. I was in a pretty good mood, but it's just you know a uh, male resting bitch face or something. Um, and uh, yeah, that 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 did spark a meme that uh, briefly people were. were I'd I'd like that to to kind of catch again because. I'd I'd love to get more more photos to um, I don't know potentially because I, I used it in the video where I was talking about MythCon uh, all of those those means people just sent I mean I made a few myself but I would say like seventy five percent of them were made by uh, just people who either follow me on Twitter or are CC fans and. Um, some of them were amazing in terms of just like the Photoshop skills, like, uh, and, and uh, people just start like, like uh, it, it was, it was great. Like getting these, these pictures of me and some of my favorite movies, like, I don't know, they're like, there's one with me and Goodfellas, one of me and enter the dragon, one of me and reservoir dogs, uh, like, uh, just you know, just s- sitting there with with the beer in my hand and and just just just, just hanging out in these and then and, and then also like uh, like on the Ruben Report and and other things like that. But anyway, I don't know where to go with that. You maybe you should <laughs> the question. I feel like I'm trailing off. Well, I, I totally forgot. I was looking at the the notes I had written down. So recently, there you know the Mrs. Milwaukee people are doing a conference with a different name this year. I didn't remember what it's called. Oh, Something about absolutely. dissenting voices. Right, right, right. It's, it's called, um, uh, better, better, oh, uh, better or, or it's something like, it's a very pretentious title. Um, I, I forgot to say that, uh, the, it, I started talking about it, but like my brain is just like jello right now. Mm. Um, the audience was so fucking loud through the whole thing. I mean, they were just like booing me. Like, I, I guess I did mention that I felt like I was a, like, you know, some uh, like bad, bad guy wrestler. Uh, but it, it was, it was really funny because um, people were just 
so just like at, at a certain point, I, I I just got kind of not hostile, but just had some fun with them. Like kind of took the piss out of them. I remember like asking like, oh, hold on, uh, can, can, can I get a, a like a, a raise of hands or you know a, a like like a vocal uh, vote like like who here is 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 fans of Steven Crowder and and I think I asked some somebody else uh, or, or about mm-hmm. somebody else and uh, or ben, I think the other one was Ben Shapiro and and I just said fuck Steven Crowder like, yeah the crowd went um, bonkers like when you mentioned his yeah. name you knew like you heard the reaction very positive and then you said fuck Steven Crowder which you know you should say that. <laughs> It's just insane to me that like this, this, um, you know, I, again, I went into it because like I wanted to sort of combat what I thought was bad ideas. And then it did have, in my opinion, a good residual side effect. See, I just, I don't think that what they're doing, I, I don't think that it, it, it uh, has a, like, I don't think it serves a good function. I think that they kind of try and present it. If, if they were presenting it as like, hey, this is super right wing, and we invite like a few left wingers to 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 you know to to get wrecked, um, the way which I I did not get wrecked um, at all. I, I think I. I I, I think I wrecked them <laughs> for the most part, but uh, yeah, I, um, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I'm just so tired that I keep losing my. No, I think, I think yeah, for, for being in an audience and people on stage who some were like, mm-hmm. seemed like they were friendly, but it almost seemed like instead of them having a political opinion, it seemed like they got mad because people attacked them for their bad opinions and they couldn't handle it. And that, you know, that's that whole Harper's thing all over again. And you're yeah. just, it, it you was, were just on there and you just said what you felt. And, you know, I think it went as well as it could have. Yeah. I based mean, on it, was, the, it was weird. The, where you, you were. You, you said that the, it was, it was like four on one because the moderator uh, himself was. God loves spell was, checker. I mean, yeah, he's that guy. the people on there. I'm like, yeah, some of them like I knew who they were. I may have liked them in the past, and then it's like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, there just came this period where, like, like Godless Spellchecker is a is a big um, Dave Rubin fan, and I don't know how uh, anyone can call themselves a a skeptic of any sort and appreciate that dude. Uh, that dude is is just like, um, I mean, he, he should be kryptonite. To, but 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 that's the again we then then we go back to what I was talking about before about how just skepticism in general sort of went down the toilet. But yeah, he um, was a terrible moderator. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I let him know I guess on Twitter, but he like there were a couple of points where both Armored Skeptic and Jacqueline Glenn brought up tweets. And uh, like, like, like tweets, which I didn't actually ever write. And mm. it's sort of like, what? Like, you're not doing your job as a moderator uh, when you're allowing, uh, like, well, how, how are we supposed to discuss this? Like, or, like you know, like uh, maybe if they brought like slides and they could project them onto the fucking <laughs> wall, then um you know it would be a pertinent thing to bring up but it was just like this he said she said thing and uh, like that took up i think like maybe five to ten minutes of the discussion and i think that the reason why he allowed that is because it gave them the illusion of getting one over on me and they really didn't because again the things that that Armored Skeptic brought up, that Jacqueline Glenn, I was not expecting to sort of be at odds with Jacqueline Glenn in that in that talk, but um, because we we got along really well until we got on the stage. And that was that was a bit of a surprise. But again, like they brought up this like kind of personal bullshit that just, in my opinion, 
had no business being like, like there's, there's plenty of things. I mean, especially with armored skeptic that I could have brought up about his behavior. Uh, and I was just like, well, I'm not going to, cause this is a discussion and I want to be professional about this shit. So <laughs> yeah, it's tough being there and being professional. And for anyone who like this episode, there are a lot of names you're going to get to know, mm -hmm. check them all out. Check out the, the discussion, the Mrs. Milwaukee, the actual, you know, debate or whatever session. And then check out uh, Krishna's cat's uh, post Mythicist Milwaukee videos. Cause you talk, you right. talk specifically about armored skeptic. Cause armored skeptic was one of those early on. I was like, huh. And then after a while I'm like, eh. and then like, <laughs> wait, what happened to this guy? It's called a uh, Canadian armor. guy. Who's it's called, uh, I believe armored skeptic. Oh, skepticism down the toilet and you. I, again you know like uh, i don't know what sort of connotations people have with the term skeptic who are watching right now and it used to kind of mean using a somewhat really? scientific and rigid way to kind of um analyze things to make sure that you're that your sources are as as strong as they can be. And it's sort of like, again, I've sort of let go of the term, but at the time when he started getting a mixture of, of very popular and his, and, his, and his material just got horrible, it was like a dagger in the heart because uh, there was this time where I thought and, and looking back on it, I feel very naive, but there was a period where I saw more and more people becoming skeptics, more and more people becoming atheists, and it was briefly leading to good things. Like we, we were um, successfully kind of... I don't want to say um, pwning, but but just um, de not not debating, um, just just really. What, what's the word? Um, we were winning the debate, you know, when it came to all, all sorts of things, and 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 again, like the evangelical right has a lot of influence on our policy, and they they, they try and get more and more. So I felt like the, the, the whole scene was, was doing a, a great deal of good, but then, um, you know, he, he started making these videos that were just appalling in terms of the, the, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, wasn't expecting to come on here and like trash talk people, but just like his, his, uh, he's notoriously horrible when it comes to his, um, his research, he, he has just made videos that are so factually inaccurate. And so the fact that he bears that title and he might be the most popular skeptic on, on YouTube, it's, it just, it's like a dagger in the heart back, back in the day, it was like people like Carl Sagan and the amazing Randy and uh, people, you know, in like, like that, who, um had the uh, you know the that carried the moniker and and they, they they did it proud and now it's just gone to shit <laughs> i'll probably to... make, a, make a video uh when i'm when i rebrand eventually about the whole experience of of, of kind of watching the atheist skeptic community crumble and and what a, a, like my own private hell of that, of that yeah. experience entailed. But uh, what we have to, you have to be skeptical of people who use the term. I mean, yeah. you should be skeptical of politicians definitely, but then you should be skeptical of even the people you turn into heroes. Because if you've been in the atheist community in any way for the past 10 years, you have almost if not deified, come close to somebody who you've been like later found out, God, that's a terrible person. Like, and, yeah. and it's yeah. not even subjective. It's objective. Yeah. And I do. Um, since we're getting toward the end, mm -hmm. I did want to ask, so what's the uh, nail polish color that you're using this evening? Uh, it's if you 
it's just like bright ass yellow. Um, bright ass yellow. I, I, I'm working on a video that has to do mostly with uh, a uh, a YouTuber called the Quartering, and it kind of chronicles <laughs> oh his um, obsession. I think invited to MythCon too, right? I think, I'm pretty I, sure. Probably. Um, <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, yeah, he was at MythCon the year that I was there. Um, he. Weirdly enough, like like we, we we didn't talk. He did buy me a beer. Like we were both at the bar at one point, and he insisted on he 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 was he was well. I think everyone was was pretty drunk, and he just insisted, well, which is nice of him. Which is nice of him. But um, uh, other than that, we 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 don't get along too well. That, that, that yeah, I would say a, a moment in in you know just sort of like this uh, anomalous moment. But uh, what, the, what the fuck was I gonna say? That um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 a video about his, in my opinion, pretty demented obsession with Shira and his just hot takes on that. And I the reason why I'm making the video is because I I feel like the series of videos that he made on that topic really kind of summarize who he is as a content creator and as a person. And I don't know, I I. I I'm, a lot of times when I discuss particular YouTubers, the reason why I discuss them is because I think they're sort of emblematic of a whole group of YouTubers. And, you know, being mm -hmm. like also another thing that I didn't mention is that I'm also like kind of a comic book geek. And so kind of having some of the same um, like uh, like interests uh, in terms of like like pop culture and shit that he does. I don't know. I there's there there are these very successful YouTubers out there that just kind of talk about things like Star Wars and Ghostbusters and and what have you, and talk about how like you know their childhoods have been shat on and. Uh, don't get me wrong. I was not a fan of Ghostbusters 2016, but um, yeah, yeah, it was not kind of. There was so much negative toward it that I kind of wanted to like the movie, and then I watched it. And I'm like, no. that was so bad. I wanted to. It was so it. bad. I, I know I, it was really bad. It had I, good people I, in it, but it was not a good movie. I have some friends who really like it, and I just like. I'm like, whoa! I just yeah. I, yeah. couldn't even finish. I, Take it. You know, you know what? what? Like, I know we're getting towards the end, so this is a weird thing to, to sure. mention. I just have to mention it because it annoyed me so much about the movie. Um, it, like, I don't think anyone noticed this, but me. So, uh, Chris Hemsworth is—is is that his name, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe, or is it Liam Hemsworth? It was it Hemsworth? What? It was Chris. Hemsworth, yeah, I yeah. It, it, was, it was one of those guys. They're they're interchangeable. Even you no, know, they're 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 both very talented. But anyway, he was he was actually funny with what he had, but uh, he you know he's Australian, so he had an Australian accent in the film. And uh, spoilers, everybody! At the end of the movie, he gets possessed by one of the main, uh, or by by the main villain, um, uh, the the ghost of the main villain, and the main villain is this sort of like schlubby guy with a Brooklyn accent. And when he gets possessed, he still has an Australian accent. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And I guess, you know, maybe if, if like the rest of the movie was firing on all cylinders, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But to me, that's just such a glaring logical inconsistency with that movie. And it's like, why didn't somebody say to uh oh god what is the name of that director he did um is that paul, paul Feig? is that who it was paul, yeah yeah. yeah um and uh it's just like why didn't anyone hmm. bring up to him on set and i don't know it just it, you know it it's not like that is what did you know fuck the film up but it's just so emblematic of of what's wrong with that movie it's like everything is wrong with that movie i wanted i wanted to love it though i wanted it to be so good because all the anti-sjw's were just like oh, feminism is real i mean they hated that was one of those movies they hated before they even saw it but I, you yeah. know the original ghostbusters honestly was saved by like five bill murray ad libs 
I mean, his I, his ad libs made it. I mean, well, his his. I mean, because Dan Eric and Red actually I, believes I, I in this stuff. I, I don't disagree that he is like lightning in a bottle in that film, but everything in that movie to me is lightning in a bottle. I know Everybody I, did work. Yeah, the characters I, I, worked better. The plot worked yeah. better. Everything worked better. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a comedy classic. I think it's it's um in in the eighties you had a kind of um a crop of movies that I think are very rare that really uh, even though that the movie is much more of a comedy than a horror film, it still has some legitimate scares in it. Um, I mean, maybe not not compared maybe to to like the intense stuff that you get these days but still like it's i don't know i i think it's it's pretty pitch perfect but i know so, so i have some friends who just think it's dated and and uh you know isn't it, it isn't what it's um you know that doesn't deserve to be hailed as a comedy classic i'm i'm definitely in that camp that it's just one of the most perfect films of its time as perfect as a movie can get but well you know what a comedy classic is creation is cat oh, all the way thanks a to z and you could watch i don't even know all your videos combined probably like a week of someone's life if you want to watch them consecutively you might want to take a little break between but it's quality stuff and we're hoping that the series finale let me see. So the Sopranos finale, like Game of Thrones finale, maybe not the Dexter finale, but you have it all lined up. So yeah, I mean, we're going to see. I have <laughs> to. I I want to make a, a big finale for the final. It wouldn't be the final Creationist Cat episode because, like I said, he'll he'll still pop up from time to time. I think but it would be the final uh, video with the channel named Creationist Cat. And I would like to kind of have like a big send off for him, but I I just kind of have to see what uh, is doable at the time because, you know, I also have to kind of um, keep it like it, it, it costs money to make big production videos and whatnot, and I, I'm. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. You know, I, I definitely want exactly. You want to leave I, people I have, wanting more. I have a script that mm. that will. You know, I think that that if I do it, that that people will really like. Although it's, you know, it it it, it would be one of our videos that um, doesn't really have any politics involved in it. Um, Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling a bit uh, once again. Well, where can people uh, find you online so they can follow Creationist Cat? And then, of course, to follow you and your multiple Twitter personalities. Um, I, I, I'm, you could just go look up Creationist Cat on YouTube. Yeah. Google it, you'll find it. Uh, you can also follow I, – I, when it comes to Twitter, I'm – I'm much more active on Twitter than Creationist Cat is. And that's at Vadim Newquist. But if you go to Creationist Cat's feed, which is at Creationist Cat, maybe easier to figure out how to spell that. Uh, you, if you just look in the feed, you should be able to find, uh, it shouldn't take too long before you find like a retweet of one of my tweets. So if you want to find me that way, then uh, by all means, folks, uh, follow me. The more the merrier. Go on Twitter where Lauren Chen Are called you a whiny little fungus and low T, which was yeah. amazing. Oh my that was so God. a brand. That was Thanks. that was a treat. I've never been called a whiny little fungus before. I probably never will be again. Uh, I was like, this is someone who's supposed to be taken seriously, talking like an emotionally stunted teenage boy. Well, I didn't know people heard, seriously called anybody low T, but I'm like, oh, there it is. Yep, that's it. it that's a thing. It, it, she is a weird cat. Um, <laughs> she, she she is, you know, she's got this like practically like alt right side. I think she's kind of a little. Her mask is on a bit, uh, but she is genuinely very um, 
she's she, she, she's like a loaf of wonder bread you know she, she has the edge of i don't know uh, an, an episode of full house it's it's like, like she's just uh a, 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 she's a human being so when she said like you whiny little fungus i'm sure she was thinking like oh this is edgy you yeah. know but it just <laughs> uh Oh, that was a delight being, being like, I, I thought she had me muted because I, I say really uh, obnoxious things to her all the time. Cause she just, you know, she's, she's horrible. <laughs> um, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know, an angel to some and a demon to others. If, if I believe that that was maybe the tagline of, of, of the movie Hellraiser, but um uh, yeah, that's that's always kind of the way that I've been, and uh, I'm a real thorn in the side to people who I think have really shitty agendas and spread misinformation. I I I know like ye, so um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. Understood. But, uh, thanks for having me on. I had a good time, and uh, anyone who watched, thank you if if you made it this far. And I apologize that my brain is like. You know those those commercials where you see like for, for for candy bars, where you see like caramel swirling. I feel like that's what's going on in my brain right now, because I I just I probably slept maybe two hours last night, but um, but still it's been very enjoyable talking to you. Thanks thanks for the the song that was and and you've brought up some. You know, I'm I'm impressed. You've you've brought up some uh, like old CC bits that that I haven't thought about in a while. And um, just the last thing I'll say is, I would recommend. I mean, I personally, maybe you feel differently. Uh, my favorite years of the of the channel are the last three. So you know, I'd I'd, I'd start with the more recent stuff. But I don't know if you're into more atheist related content, then go way, way back. Oh no. That'd be perfect. He's still there. Did my internet die? I think I'm connected. <sighs> oh, Vadim, I, I like that facial expression at the end. Hello? <laughs> I was like, oh no, he's sitting yeah. there like frozen. I'm like, oh, what a finish. <laughs> he oh, he yeah. stuck the landing. Well, the Russian that, judge gives you a 10. Hopefully that won't happen again. That's, that's, uh, we've had issues like that. The yeah. hardest part of this is you'll click the end and then you'll have to wait like 10 seconds and it never, it's never smooth. So it's okay. Right. Uh, even two hours sleep, Vadim. I mean, to get you on, you know, a full night's sleep, man, I don't know if I keep up. So that was probably a good even battle there. So thank you for being on tonight. Uh, thank you for being on even longer than you thought you could make it. See, look at you. You could just finish your video tonight. Yeah, I'm just kidding. You, you do whatever you have to do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do have to shoot a whole bunch of stuff at night. So I... I don't think I can do it tonight. <laughs> I think I, I'm gonna yeah. crash. Um, Understood. Crash hard, but um, yeah. Thanks for having me on once again, and it's been a pleasure talking and meeting you, Mister Zacharilage. Did we? Oh, I, you didn't go to MythCon. You you just saw it on. Mm -hmm. I was about to ask yeah. you if we met. I was not there in person. No, it's okay. unfortunate, but uh, perhaps someday. So the last thing I'll say is that about that whole thing. Um, <laughs> I keep extending this. I apologize. But what was really funny is that, like I said, people were booing me and I don't know, everything from like saying you suck to um, just like just people saying like, like literally telling me to fuck off. Um, but a lot, a lot of people who I, who were being the rowdiest who I saw in the audience, like afterwards they came up to me and they were just like, talking to me like almost like fanboys and i i don't think that they were actually fans at all but it just i don't know when but being off stage people had a much different kind of demeanor to them and that was that was an interesting dynamic to say the least anyway on that note 
I should go. I need to pee and I need to sleep. Thanks, Vadim. It's been great talking Probably to you. A little too much information there, but it's it's. I'm just giving you the cold. It's all here. critical. It's very important. It's all part of the whole. So good night and all that. And good night. there we go. Live read. How possible is it to keep up with our criminal government, the pandemic, protests, and economic uncertainty? Not at all. That's why we have podcasts. That's right. Worst year ever started as an attempt to cover the events leading up to the November election. It's turned into so much more, horror in parentheses. In this week's episode, we look into the Portland protests and how members of the police go on Fox News and call protesters criminals who are violent when the violence of the police and the federal law enforcement get a major pass. Maybe a small government isn't the worst thing in the world, huh? If you want to support this show, be like Freethinker215, Alan Marks, Human, Chris of the Postmodern Polymath Podcast, Larry, Daryl, and the other Daryl. Go to patreon.com backslash Zacrilege. I guess I need to start posting more of those goat videos on there, huh? You can follow me on Twitter, like the Zach Cast page on Facebook, and send all mail to zachrelidgecast at gmail.com. Once again, I get to the end of the episode and go, oh yeah, I need actual uh, scheduled guests soon. So, you know, it's a mystery to you, it's a mystery to me. Who's going to be on this week? We will find out soon. So until then, let's continue the conversation.